Hey everybody, so today is a, um, a video about a very, very classic perfume and we're talking about Chanel number no. 5. Um, and uh, today I want to talk about the uh, Eau de Toilette version. I've been excited to talk about it, I've been uh, using it in the previous perfume rotation. I love using the scent, I think it's such an easy scent for work wear. Um, that it's kind of a must-have for me and I'll explain why particularly this formulation and maybe not um, the others. <laughs> so Chanel number no. 5 uh, Lowe is the latest release. I have reviewed it already. This is a different beast. Um, I would say a much much different pick although you can tell they're related. This is this is quite quite different. First let's appreciate the bottle. This is a 100 ml bottle, um, not my first one. I think second or third bottle that I've owned. I think I've owned a smaller sort of travel size and then I owned a full size and this is the other full size. And here we have a very nice, beautiful geometrical bottle, number five, Chanel. We have a beautiful white logo on gold and black. So obviously very Chanel uh, aesthetic. We have a really beautiful sprayer. So I'll show you the very satisfying part of this packaging. So I place the cap on top, watch this. This is magnetized. It's very satisfying to have a magnetized cap. I think more perfumes should come with those because that ensures that the cap seals completely um, and the perfume is not evaporating any more than it has to. So this beautiful number is really to me a treasure because it most resembles uh, more than any other version of Chanel and Eau de Parfum as well. This is a much older version. Um, in reality, uh, Eau de Toilette was much preceding the Eau de Parfum, which was uh, more of an 80s child. It's a much louder scent um, and it has a lot more to say in, in a very, very loud voice. This is more vintage, but timeless classic at the same time, which is why I definitely picked it for my wardrobe way, way, way over Chanel number no. 5 Eau de Parfum. Um, this is a very elegant number. I think uh, the only requirement that this perfume is asking of you is that elegance. Elegance and simplicity. This is how I can explain this perfume. Uh, again, this is closest to what the original number five was and really close to the uh, other parfum, but the extract version, the very tiny little concentrated version in the tiny little bottle. I own that and I'm absolutely in love with that scent. This is close. They are very interchangeable. This is a just in a more dilute version. I think I prefer this because application is not as tricky. It's difficult to over apply it. The sillage is actually at a hand's reach, which is really perfect for me. I don't necessarily appreciate sillage that is has a throw that is insane and people on the other side of the street can smell you. I think that's trickier, much trickier to work and to incorporate in normal life without causing asthma attacks left and right. This is a very gentle, kind perfume that is wearable during daytime, is wearable to a workplace, is not going to suffocate anybody because the throw is actually quite limited. However, the lasting power is fantastic. It's such a tricky thing to formulate, um, to formulate a perfume that is going to be wearable, subdued, yet long-lasting. And they have really nail, uh, nailed it with this one. Here we have a beautiful, beautiful combination of powerful aldehydes that are bubbly and happy and fresh and uh, resemble extreme cleanliness and somehow maybe Italian soda fuzziness and bubbliness. Such a beautiful scent. Um, it is an aldehyde floral. It has, if you think about a classic smell of soap, um, beautiful, luxurious, gorgeous soap, kind of what I'm thinking here. This is kind of the scent that you're looking for. Um, it's clean, it's aldehydic, but it has beautiful musks that really make you think of the body itself and the heat coming from the body, as well as a very beautiful smallest touch of civet. And I'm not a fan of civet, usually civet is quite revolting to me, but this is such a smallest, tiniest whiff that it references a human body perfectly without uh, quoting it in, a, in an unpleasant manner. And so the aldehydes that are shaded with civet ever so slightly 
create a much more realistic underlying body scent, but not body odor. Just it hints, it references the body, it hints towards the body, but it doesn't smell like the body smells. Um, we have a really, really nice array of classic Chanel florals. Uh, it's the Ylang Ylang that is there, very, very powerful. One of very few yellow florals that I can tolerate. Um, then we have the classic Chanel Jasmine, then we have a bit of rose, but very small amount. Um, and uh, a bit of iris, just for a touch of powderiness. Like I said, the whole thing is really built around referencing or conveying a scent of luxury uh, body care, which is exactly what kind of you, at least me, I want to smell like. I want to not necessarily smell like something very specific, but I just want to be like, she just took a bath and that was darn sexy sort of scent. Um, again, this is a an anonymous all, all and nothing kind of scent. All and nothing, not all or nothing. Uh, it's there, but it's very faint, but it's long lasting and it's hinting towards some pretty uh, interesting references of the human body but it's clean at the same time, really crisp and fresh and floral and bubbly, bubbly aldehydes. Such an interesting scent. I really think that one of the scents that is essential for you to check out and see if you, uh, if, it, if it resonates with you. I think also it's very important to try it on skin. It lives very differently on skin. My skin pulls a lot more musk and rose out of the scent. If you smell this on a paper, um, a little paper sample, it's going to completely throw you off. It's not going to smell like it's supposed to. It needs the heat of your body, it needs your body's oils to work with. And then it melts into this beautiful song of cleanliness, yet maybe something brewing underneath and lightness and beautiful florals and just this whole concoction of intoxicating light hints of aroma. It's really interesting. It's a reference aroma. It's not anything in particular. It's that clean, luxurious, beautiful, feminine aftertaste from a perfume. Basically, if a perfume was uh, sort of distilled down and worn for a long time, this is kind of like a great, fantastic perfume. This is kind of what it would smell like at the end of the day. But here you have an advantage of just applying the whiff of the aftertaste of a great fragrance. And this is what number five is all about. It's about hints, it's about subtlety, and it's about elegance. Um, the only requirement I think for this fragrance is that it is worn elegantly. Basically, um, it's such a day scent. I think you can layer it heavier for the night and then different notes are gonna pop up. More florals um, are gonna come out if you, if you layer it up. However, if you're wearing it for daytime, one to two spritzes will do you and it will last the whole day without interfering with people's noses and being intrusive. What a beautiful concoction. I think it's a wonderful, wonderful formulation. I think that formulation is probably one of my favorites, if not my favorite. It's battling with the Pure Parfum, the little tiny super concentrated perfume. And it's also kind of battling at the moment with the um, Pandier for my for, for the laurels of my favorite Chanel 5. I have to say, um, I don't think that the Lou, Chanel number no. 5 Lou, the latest one, really compares to what it can do in terms of its poetry <laughs> of a fragrance compared to this one. I think this is an entirely different beast, although you can tell they're related, you can smell it. But um, the toilet, I think, is the way to go if you want, if you want what I think Coco Chanel intended you to smell like. This is the way to go. That's it for today. See you guys later. Bye-bye.